ago. It's a very interesting um, subject, and I would like to thank the um, organizers and scientific committee for inviting me. My first assignment was doing surgery in metastatic disease, and to be honest, I wasn't too happy with that assignment. And the scientific committee, particularly led by Alan Coates and Monica Morrow, give me a different assignment and who should not have breast conservation. If it's a more easier one, I'm not completely sure, but I'll try, I do my best. I have one disclosure, I'm a surgeon and not a radiation oncologist, and further I have not, nothing to disclose. So who should not have breast conservation? Um, there are facts, dogmas, and beliefs. Um, and I, I mention quite, quite a few who are believed to be possible, relative, or absolute contraindications for breast conservation. And it's the young age uh, with uh, always the difficulty of threshold. For me, when I become older, the threshold of young age is going up as well. Um, extensive or diffuse microcalcifications, multifocal disease, multicentric disease, cancer close to the nipple. You can read it all. Extensive vascular invasion, extensive DCIS associated with invasive cancer, lobular histology, the family history of breast cancer, BRCA1 and 2 mutation carriers, involved margins, no possibility for adequate radiotherapy, unfavorable biology on gene expression profiling, and the patient prefers mastectomy. I couldn't come up with more. I think these are the, the main reasons where discussions are in the tumor boards or whatever to, to do mastectomy, yes or no. And I, I take first the last one, and that the patient prefers mastectomy. And um, even after a thorough and honest shared decision-making process, a couple of studies showed that about a quarter of the patients really do prefer themselves a, a mastectomy over breast conservation in the same clinical situation. This is an older study, I have to say, it's 15 years old, but it was a very nice study, a comparative study. And uh, finally, patients were informed about breast conservation by me, by the doctors. And after that, it was a kind of randomized study with um, an extensive information program. And the in interesting thing of this was that the rate of patients who choose this for a mastectomy didn't change after seeing this extensive information program. It remained 27%. And this is another study, more recent, and uh, 125 patients prospectively uh, followed and informed and uh, viewing a decision and aid program. And here, one third chooses mastectomy. And an editorial from that paper by, by Laura Esselman and Alyssa Thukmorten uh, tells us that indeed a substantial proportion of women do opt for mastectomy, they prefer mastectomy. And more importantly for me, this, the mastectomy rate or the breast conservation rate in early breast cancer in itself should not be a quality indicator be because the quality is determined by the patient and not by the statistics. So local treatment, it's the biology where, and um, where Monica alluded already to it. It's optimal local control. It's the best poss possible cosmetic outcome and the least long-term side effects, and it's a delicate balance. Most relevant factors determining local control, so it's being told already in the previous presentation, it's the biology, but it's also the imaging, and it's the type of surgery, and it's the pathology report, it's the workup of the specimen, it's the radiotherapy, and it's the systemic treatments. So in itself, it's not, it, it's, an integration of all information which leads to optimal local control in breast cancer. What are nowadays the local control rates? Is there anyway something to improve? Or has management changed over time? Has biology changed? And um, Holland is a small province of Europe having 17 million inhabitants, and we are quite well organized. That's sometimes funny, sometimes a problem, but we are organized. And we have a, a national audit on breast cancer, and the inspectorate, the health inspectorate, the health police, uh, um, 
uh, obliges us to have an outcome indicator on local control in five years. And here are the results of over 32,000 patients being with early breast cancer, operable breast cancer, being treated in the years 2003, and now I'm going to use this funny thing, uh, 2003 and 2006, you can see here, hola, blue, eh? Yeah. Here, the local control rates. It's about in five years, and it's almost five years follow-up, 2.5%, and in the past year, less than 2%. And here you see the local relapse rates for mastectomy patients. So it's extremely low. And here is a funnel plot, and it's a bit difficult to explain, but every dot is a hospital. So there's about 80 hospitals in the Netherlands doing breast cancer, treating breast cancer patients. And you, you can see here the volume of a hospital. So for instance, this hospital here has a volume of about 180 patients, and the local relapse rate of these patients in five years was around 3%. So you can see that all hospitals are below the line of 5% at five years. Mastectomy, somewhat more. There are some outliers, but few patients. But here you can see also the vast majority of local relapse rates after mastectomy is, uh, is uh, below 5% at five years. And you can see we are very well organized. All patients who had breast conservation had their radiotherapy. The vast majority, and uh, after mastectomy, uh, about a quarter of patients had uh, radiotherapy. So that's, that's the current population-based results, and I'm sure that it will not differ so much in France or in Switzerland or in Germany or whatever. Another example, and, and then I will stop, here are uh, three trials where breast conservation is performed, and this is the old mastectomy, the 10801 trial with the 25 years of follow-up, and you can see here in breast conservation, the local relapse rates, you can see the boost, no boost being published, and here is a, du a Dutch trial, recent trial uh, in, in younger patients. So are standards met? Yes, maybe even better. It raises for me the question, are we over-treating? But maybe that's for over two years, this discussion. Has management changed? Yes, more adjuvant systemic treatments, which leads to better local control. Better selection, probably different imaging, digital mammography, etc. But still there are high, relatively high mastectomy rates throughout the countries, and this could also be due to patient preferences. We have to remind that. It's not only the doctor's prejudices. And has biology changed? Yes, to some extent. I do believe by the screening effect and the better awareness. So the, what are now the proven signific significant risk factors for local relapse after breast conservation. Uh, but then, what is clinically significant? A hazard ratio of over two, or an absolute risk of over 10% more in 10 years, or 20% more in 10 years? So what is clinically significant? Uh, and according to the overview of the um, Oxford group, the, um, a more than 10% local relapse rate is likely to have some significant negative impact on overall survival in the long run. I have to say, explaining all these figures to an individual patient is difficult for me. Usually patients don't understand percentages, hazard rates, and uh, absolute risks. It's very difficult. So that's a caveat I have to say when I explain patients and try to make an honest shared decision-making process with her. But the proven risk factors, everybody knows, gross incomplete resection, no radiotherapy, I'll come back to that. The margins, of course, will be covered by Dr. Wood. Young age, I will allude a little bit. And uh, biology, BRCA1-2 gene signatures. Here is uh, some data of the large boost, no boost trial, where even close and positive margins is not in that trial not associated with a huge risk on, on, on local relapse. But again, I'm not uh, given the talk of Dr. Wood, I'm stopping here. This is the overview data on breast conservation with and without radiotherapy being published in Lancet in 2011. And uh, do remember it's 10,800 women randomized between yes or no radiotherapy. And here you can see that radiotherapy really, really is important in um, reducing the risk of uh, breast relapse. And here you can see it, will, it has also an impact on breast cancer-specific survival. 
Uh, and particularly, this is the case for patients with N plus disease here. You can see here. So um, radiotherapy more than halves the risk of a relapse in the breast after breast conservation. And finally, it saves lives as well. And here is a graphic um, uh, uh, display of the, dimin uh, the, the decreasing the risk of dying of breast cancer by better local control. And it's particularly true for the node positive disease, but also to some extent for node negative disease. So this, this slide you can't read. I did it on purpose, but this is also from the, this overview. And what, for me, it, important thing is, is this, and it's the young age. Here you can see, I enlarged it a little bit, that for women under the 40, age, 40 years of age, the um, event rate per woman year, for breast relapse is 6 and 11%, 6 without radio, with radiotherapy and 11% without radiotherapy. So that's an enormous. And I immediately realized this is in the era before wide application of systemic treatments. I, I looked at Monica and I, she's nodding, yeah, yes, you're right. But still, the annual rate of relapse in young women is high. This is being seen in the ORTC trial published, and this is another example. You see the age under 40, quite high local relapse rates. Um, so, young age, either 34 or 40, in the discussion with the patient, should be mentioned as a risk factor for local relapse. Is your basis, basical risk low, then a hazard ratio of two is not that much. But if there is a higher risk, you should take to that in, into account. Lobular cancer, only short, um, because in, in, in phase of time, lobular cancer in itself is not a risk factor for local relapse, period. If you remove the lobular invasive lobular cancer, the local controls are ex exactly the same. You can't read it, but it's, it's here and it's in this paper. So, who should not have breast conserving therapy? For me to, con to conclude for the coming Monday, young age, it's not an absolute contraindication, but risks must be discussed, honestly. Extensive and diffuse microclassifications, I had no time to go into that. But it's not in itself. You have to prove that this is associated with ductal carcinoma inside you. The microclassifications diffuse in both breath, breasts should not be a reason in itself to do a mastectomy. You, you should know what the, what the origin is of these microclassifications. Multifocal disease. If you do a segmentectomy where the um, diseased segment of the breast is totally removed. There is no problem with breast conservation and local control. I have only one minute. But it's, it's the concluding slides, John. So, um, multicentric disease, that's interesting. Two, two different breast cancers in two uh, parts of the breast. Yes, you could do breast, breast conservation if you obey the rules that the margins are free. Uh, cancer close to the nipple, of course, not if the margins are free. Extensive vascular invasion in itself, not because it's the same risk factor for after mastectomy. Extensive DCIS associated with invasive ductal cancer, no, unless it's removed, again. Lobular histology, no. Um, family history, no. BRCA1 and 2 mutation in itself, a BRCA1 and 2 mutation is not associated with a extremely high risk of local relapse, but it's the discussion of preventive, preventing a second primary in this lady. Involved margins, yes. If there is involved margins after maximal optimal attempt to achieve clear margins, there is a real risk. And no possibility for adequate radiotherapy. It's the second yes. Unfavorable biology, probably no, but needs further research. Patients prefers mastectomy, yes. There are the only three reasons where you should consider mastectomy in patients. I have to thank a couple of people who helped me. And of course, I um, would like to thank Hans-Jörg Sen, and I would like to make this one for him. So, and thank you for your attention.